Alright guys, so finally gonna do this video that everyone's been asking me for and that's how much I spent on my car and you know how much it can cost you because I spent a lot of money and it can be way cheaper but I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of what I spent and you know what you guys need or don't need and this is all based on my research and my experience I'm, I'm not an expert I'm just a dude who actually did a coyote swap and I'm only 22 years old so um, just me and my dad actually did it outside of my house so if you guys are new to this channel I'm JD and this is my coyote swap Okay, so I figured I'd come in the garage just cause out there it's like pretty sunny and then it looks weird on camera and then I gotta hold the camera so here at least it's set and I just gotta worry about talking and looking up what I bought. So let me just get straight into it. I am gonna say everything that I bought and right off the bat I'm gonna tell you how much I paid. So for my entire swap this is a like pretty close estimate. I paid $17,973. $17,973. And honestly, it probably rounds up to 18,000 because all of these are just like, like, you know, with taxes and stuff from everything, I'm pretty sure it's 18K. So, but before you get scared, let me tell you, I upgraded so many things that are not necessary to do the swap. So what I'm gonna do is tell you what you will need and not need, basically. So I'm gonna go down my list and tell you what you do need, okay? So obviously the first thing's gonna be the engine, okay? So my engine, I purchased my engine for $3,200, yeah. And that's shipped. So this is a Gen 2 2015 Mustang motor. It does have 66,000 miles. Well, it did have 66,000 miles when I bought it. Now, that's that was okay for me, you know, getting a used engine. So I got it for $3,200. And usually the Gen 2 motors, they go for a little bit more, honestly, than 3,000. Uh, I got a really good deal. It was, you know, it's risky buying a, a used engine, but as always, but I said, you know what, like, I, I gotta do it, it's a good deal. So, got the engine for $3,200. And then, um, the next major thing would be the transmission, right? So my transmission, I went with a T56 from a 03 Cobra. And uh, it came with the aluminum drive shaft and it came with a short throw shifter. It's a transmission that has 55,000 miles. I bought it from the parts farm and it came out to 3,000, I think like $3,200, which is pretty pricey, right? And I probably will eventually upgrade to the Magnum, but for right now, it's doing the job. Like it's, it's, it's doing the job, it's good. So the next major thing would be the control pack. The control pack, I got it from Power by the Hour. That was, I have it right here. It was $1,626. And like I said, it was from Power by the Hour. Great company, you guys definitely buy your parts from them. Like they're really, really good with customer service and helping you guys out. And then let's see, the fuel system, that's the next big thing. The fuel system I bought from Lethal Performance, they do have a new edge specific Coyote Swap fuel system. And it is a return style fuel system, as these engines need. It came out to one thousand one hundred and ninety-three dollars, and that is with um, 
465 pumps. So I got twin 465 pumps, which is more than enough NA, but I'm gonna, you know, want this car to be boosted in the future. But for now, NA is fine. So those are like, I would say the, the main things for the swap, engine, transmission, fuel system, and control pack. Those things right there. But now, I am going to go in order with a lot of things because I mean those things just it sounds so simple but there's so much more to this swap so I'm not sure it depends on what you guys want to go with like if you want to get a gen if you want to get a gen 1 engine it depends like if it's a f-150 or if it's a, a Mustang gen 1 motor they have their differences I'm pretty sure if you guys are looking at this video, you guys should know the differences. The F-150s cannot rev as high as the Mustang engines. They have different cams and the compression ratio is slightly different. It's uh, a little less. Still great motors. So if you guys want to do an F-150 swap, you can, you know, by all means do that. It's still a way better of a platform than the two valve I mean obviously you know there's gonna be the argument you could build a two valve and all that stuff but let's just face it it's a it's still a better motor than the two valve the F-150 Coyote engine so like I said it just depends what you guys want right but I'm gonna be talking right now about the gen 2 motor what I had to do and prices okay so if you guys want to use your AC and you know your stock power steering and your uh let's see well yeah i guess if you want to use ac and your power steering on th on this car you're gonna need to buy the power by the hour brackets okay so i'm gonna give you my parts that you need that you need okay i'm gonna go you know one two three four i'm gonna go in order on parts that you need okay and then at the end i'm gonna tell you the extras that i recommend that you do and that i did okay so right now i'm gonna give you the stuff that you do need Okay, so like I said, you're gonna need your engine, okay? You're gonna need your engine. And mine, you know, came out to 3,200. You're going to need a K member. Now there's, you know, there is some people that are gonna say, no, you don't, you can use a stock K member. You can use a stock K member, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be a pain in the ass because you cannot use long tube headers with the stock K member unless you really grind some areas it's just a big hassle, man. If you have a lot of time in your hands and you want to grind, grind, grind away and fabricate, then by all means. But like 99% of us are going to want the K-Member. So the K-Member that I got is from UPR and I bought the K-Member kit. It was $918. That's tubular A-arms, the K-Member, and it comes with coilovers, okay? And with this engine, since it's a Gen 2, the oil pan is a little bit... I guess uh, like and it's a little bit longer in the bottom like it's thicker so it'll hit the K-member so I had to buy some 3 8 shims for my motor mounts okay and I'm using 4.6 motor mounts so you do not need the 5.0 motor mounts you can you can use either or it's up to you I'm using the 4.6 motor mounts so because the oil pan hits the K-member, I had to buy 3 8 spacers or shims for the motor mounts. And I also had to buy 3 8 spacers for the K-member. Now, you don't, you can do away with those spacers and shims if you buy an aftermarket oil pan. But aftermarket oil pans are like anywhere from three to $400. And the shims were only $30 and the spacers were 120. Still comes out cheaper than the oil pan. Okay, and then you, you're gonna need your control pack. Now there's a Ford, the Ford racing one directly from Ford or you can go through Power by the Hour. I 100% suggest you get the one from Power by the Hour because it's it's honestly like more refined and different but almost the same. And not only that, you can get their great customer service. They're gonna help you like literally with any question that you have. You know, there's people that like call them just asking questions and don't buy anything. But if you buy a control pack or anything from them, like you have, you know, the right to keep asking questions because you're, you're, you know, you're paying for their, their stuff. So I would suggest buying from them. 
The next thing that you do need is a fuel system. Like I said, mine is from Lethal Performance. And I wouldn't suggest going any other way. I mean, there's people that piece it together, like literally buy their own fuel pump, literally buy, like, you know, they piece it together buying their own fittings, their own lines and stuff. If you know what you're doing, by all means, go ahead and do that. You know, you can cheap out a little bit and, you know, save some money. But I wouldn't recommend it, you know, because the majority of us aren't really good with knowing our fittings and our sizes, AN, all that. It just, it can get pretty, pretty damn confusing. So, Lethal Performance has their Coyote Swap New Edge fuel system, and it's great. I mean, like, you still have to put some stuff together, but you got all your parts, all your fittings, all your lines, and it's literally like plug and play. So I would suggest going with the Lethal Performance Division X fuel system. You're also gonna need some BBK long tube headers, or you can get, you know, more expensive, some Cooks headers, some other Coyote Swap headers, but mostly everybody, all of us Coyote Swap guys, we get the BBK headers. And I did pay a little bit more, so I got the uh, ceramic long tube headers but they are BBK and it just, why not? You know what I mean? You're getting the, the, you're getting the K member for the motor. Might as well get the headers. You can leave the stock manifolds, but I just, you're gonna, you're gonna end up going headers at some point. You don't have to, but I'm gonna say you need them. So just get the headers, okay? And then uh, you will need O2 extensions, uh, 15 through 17, BBK O2 extensions. I bought them because I have the long tube headers and I already knew from doing research that the O2s were not gonna reach the engine harness. So if you do get the long tube headers for the Gen 2, you will need the O2 extensions. And trust me, like you will need them 100%. Like they came in clutch, I needed them and I'm just glad I bought them. Compressor and so that you can use your power steering pump from the new edge, okay? So for those brackets, it does come out to 749. So you do need that. And then, um, now by need, I mean like if you, like I said, if you want the AC and all that stuff, use the stock stuff, by all means. There's people out there that don't care about the AC, which I understand, and they just leave it how it is, how the motor comes, so I guess you don't need it, but I'm gonna say you do, you know, because major the majority of us do want AC and stuff, especially here in Texas, it's hot as hell. So, yeah, the next thing is gonna be a clutchless alternator, a clutchless alternator pulley. So, basically, it's a pulley for the alternator that allows it to spin the other way because the stock pulley on there, it'll spin the other way, but it's not charging the alternator how it should. You're gonna have low voltage, like I did at first. And I, once I bought the clutchless alternator pulley from Power by the Hour, my voltage went straight up to 14 volts, as it should. So you will need that if you buy those brackets. And that is, like I said, on power by the hour. And you see, the next thing you're gonna need is a engine harness for the actual motor. Now, my engine did not come with the engine harness, so I did have to buy it. Um, it was a Gen 2 15 through 17, you know, engine harness since it is a Gen 2 motor. So you are gonna need the 5.0 engine harness if your engine doesn't come with it, okay? Another thing, you will need a pedal bracket. Now, the control pack from Power by the Hour and the Ford Racing one, it does come with the Coyote pedal. Now, it does not come with a bracket, so you do need to buy your own bracket. There is a couple brands out there. Um, I forget the names, but I think I bought mine from Power by the Hour. I know Late Model Restoration does have some brackets, I think, on there, LMR, but I, I went with Power by the Hour, and the brand that I got is called Scram Speed Pedal Bracket. And um, yeah, it's a pretty beefy bracket, so I would suggest getting that one. Another thing you will need is a oil screw adapter. Now, what that is, is like this little screw that literally has thread on both sides, that is gonna go into your block, and then that's what screws your uh, oil filter on. So if you buy an engine that has an oil cooler, more than likely, it's not gonna fit because it's gonna end up hitting, I forget if it's a K-member or the rack and pinion, I forget. But, like most of the time, you're not gonna, you're gonna have to take off your oil cooler. So you're gonna need that little, 
that little screw which adapts into the block and it connects your, your and it connects your oil filter now this I will say you will need but you actually don't but I'm gonna say you do and it is a battery relocation kit that is so you can obviously put the battery in the trunk now the reason I say that you don't need it but need it is because there's some of you guys out there that have a swap and still have your battery in the engine bay which is you know normal fine but I know a lot of us including myself we like having this intake facing towards the driver's side like how it should be you know so like what guys will do is they'll leave their battery where it is stock but they'll face the cold air intake the other way and to me like it's fine but it's just a little odd I'd rather have it you know go in the direction it should and plus who doesn't want more weight in the rear of the car hooking better it's just you know getting that distribution a little bit better the weight distribution so now for the gen 1 engines uh, I don't think they require a mini starter so you can probably buy a, you know like a normal starter but I know that for sure the gen 2's so that you don't have any clearance issues and stuff with the headers it's gotta be a mini starter and that's what I bought and I, I bought mine used so the price on here that I'm putting it's because I bought it used brand new I'll put the price also the slash and put the normal price but yeah they're a little pricey for that little starter now one thing you will need is if you want to you know if you want the car to perform how it should you're gonna need a good clutch now the clutch that I bought it's it hasn't been holding up how I thought it should and the one I bought was a spec stage 3 plus clutch now it's good for like 750 torque or whatever but it just it can't it can't hold up to those high rpm shifts it's good if you're gonna be shifting like at 6,000 or on there but anything close to 7 or past 7,000 rpms it just it doesn't work like the clutch will stay stuck to the floor it's it just it's just not a good clutch for high revving I wish I would have known but I already bought a RXT McLeod or McLeod however you want to say it I bought an RXT clutch twin disc so that one should be more than enough and it should be it should allow me to shift at higher RPMs so if you're gonna buy a clutch for this Coyote swap I would say get a twin disc clutch 100% don't get anything else get a twin disc clutch and I mean you could still like I said drive around with another clutch you just don't expect to be shifting at high RPM shifts so yeah get a good twin disc clutch yeah and one more thing if you buy a twin disc clutch such as the you know like the, McL the McLeod RXT clutch you're gonna need an adjustable pivot ball okay just because you're gonna need that adjustment to make sure the clutch engages and disengages as it should and if you don't already I keep forgetting I have an adjustable clutch cable so like I can adjust it from here in the firewall and you gotta get the the quadrant for the cable so just make sure you have that adjustability because you're gonna need it especially having you know it's a different engine you're gonna have a, a different clutch it's a whole different setup you're gonna need that adjustability for your clutch cable so get you know everything the firewall the firewall adjuster for the clutch cable the quadrant and then you know the better clutch and the pivot ball now the alternator if it is a Mustang engine you have to get a 5.0 alternator especially with these power by the hour brackets I made the mistake in the beginning of buying a F-150 alternator because I thought it would be the same you know 5.0 5.0 but it's not the pulley wasn't aligning with the other pulleys or the bell and the bracket so I had to go to O'Reilly's and I had to buy a 5.0 Mustang alternator so be sure you get a Mustang alternator because it's not gonna line up with these brackets now another thing you are gonna need is the tune to tune the car now there's various tuners out there there's a lot of them now the big names there's a couple you know you got Palm Beach you got Lund and what else there's other guys that are pretty you know recognized around that tune but the tuner that I went with is Lund Racing and I mean I had nothing but good nothing but good things to say about them I mean the, 
I had a 93 performance tune, it was good. I have a flex fuel tune, which is, you know, 93 with E, and it's good. I also got the full E85R tune, and it's, the car performs good. Like, I got nothing bad to say about them. They got great customer service, you know, they'll ask you questions through emails, you respond back. So, I would say go with Lund, 100%. Now, like I said, it's up to you. It is pricey, I'll put the price right here. Yes, $800, that's how much it was. And like I said, it's up to you, but if you want my opinion, I would say go Lund, 100%. And yeah, I'm using my STT device. So if you don't have a tuning device, you're going to need one. If you, you can buy a, a Lund N-Gage. You know, since we have Coyotes, we can use N-Gages. Or if you have the STT X4, that's more than, you know, that's, that's fine, because that's what I'm using. I'm using the SCT X4 device, and I, you can still tune with that. The logging process is a little different, but yeah, that's still good. So I would say go Lund 100%. Another thing you will need is obviously, you know, the basic stuff. You're gonna need, uh, you know, uh, coolant. I only paid like $13, I got it like an AutoZone. Um, if you change your gears in the rear, you're gonna need some diff fluid, it was like 27 bucks. Uh, I did change my gears if you guys are wondering because I have the T56 the uh, first gear the gears are pretty long So like you're gonna need more gear in, in the rear and obviously because this coyote it revs way more So I do have four tens in the rear now a lot of you guys are thinking like what four tens? That's crazy, but I promise you it's not When I'm in sixth gear on the highway, going about 70, 75 miles per hour, it's it's still not at 2,500 RPMs, it's under that. So it's fine, it's not like it's anything ridiculous. And yeah, you're gonna need four tens at least if you're on a five speed because looking at other people's Coyote swaps with five speeds, like if you have you know 327 gears or 355s, it's just gonna be like really, really long you know, shifting. You're gonna be there in one gear forever and you're gonna want more gear. So yeah, definitely four tens or more. Up to you, you know, what you wanna do with the car. But let's continue. Uh, the motor oil, it was like 70 bucks. I put a 5W30. What else? Okay, and this is like really important. If you guys really want your, your stock gauges to work, you're gonna have to send it off to this guy named Nathan. Now Nathan is like really, really good with helping you out and answering your questions and his overall, like what he does to the the harness is 100% it works. My, all my gauges work. If you guys haven't seen, I have a video on my channel and it shows how my stock gauges work. You know, the fuel, the speedometer, the RPMs, oil pressure, coolant temperature, it all works, trust me. So. 100% go check that video out and hit Nathan up. I'll put a picture of his profile right here. Okay, he did charge a hundred and it's hundred and fifty dollars, but you're gonna have to pay for shipping to get your harness to him, and you have to pay for the shipping back. So for me, I paid hundred and ninety dollars. Hundred and ninety dollars. Now, he what he customizes is the four point six harness. So not the five point harness, not the control pack. He's gonna take your old 4.6 two valve engine harness. You, so you send him the engine harness and he takes out everything you don't need. And when, he gets, when you get it back, it's already wired you know, to like what you do need. And uh, like I said, he'll help you out if you have any questions. But that's pretty much all the stuff that you would need need. Now, I didn't mention, you, you don't need a T56. You don't need that because you can use your stock transmission. Now, if it's gonna hold up is another question, you know what I mean? Like, if you wanna just drive it, that's it's gonna be fine. But if you wanna be beating on the car, I don't think your T45 and your TR3650 is gonna hold up that long. There's this guy named Chris Sipple. He has a TR3650 and it's been holding up pretty good and I'm pretty sure he occasionally gets on his car and it's fine. But I mean, only time will tell, you know? So. Everything I just told you guys is stuff that you will for sure 100% need. And hopefully I'm not missing anything because there's so many stuff, look, there's so much stuff to this swap 
that is just crazy look at all that this was my list and i gave it all check marks slowly but okay now i'm gonna go over extra things that i suggest you get if you're already spending this money you might as well get this stuff trust me okay so i would suggest changing the transmission obviously either you get a cobra t56 or the new t56 magnum I'll tell you the downside real quick about getting a Magnum. The downside is that yes, it costs around 3100, but you're gonna need a quick time bell housing in order to mount that transmission to this motor or any other Coyote. You're gonna need a quick time bell housing and they go for like, I think it's like eight or $900 just for the bell housing, plus the 3100 of the transmission. And then not only that, you are going to need a custom dry shaft you cannot just use your stock 4.6 or a cobra or a cobra drive shaft you're gonna need it like slightly i'm not sure if it's extended or cut but you're gonna need a custom drive shaft and that's already 800 900 plus 31 it's gonna be like over four thousand dollars to get a magnum so it, it is pricey you know versus what i did i just got a 0304 cobra transmit t56 and I can use the drive shaft. I'm using the drive shaft. I just gotta change the flange in the back. So yeah, I would suggest, you know, getting a T56 from a Cobra or the Magnum if you got, you know, the money. If you buy a T56, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna need a reverse lockout module. What that is, is it's a, like a, a little module on the side of the T56 and it's gonna basically save you from going into reverse when you're driving. Like it'll lock it. It's not gonna let you go in there, and it. I think it even. It makes it a little easier for you to go into reverse, because if you don't have that module, it's gonna be like pretty difficult to get into reverse. So, yeah, it's a module that's dedicated to the reverse on the transmission for safety reasons, and I bought that for hundred and twelve dollars. What else? Um, if you do buy a Cobra T fifty six. You're gonna use, you know, more than likely the, the Cobra drive shaft. Now, you will need a Cobra flange. I did not know this when I was installing the transmission with my dad. The drive shaft was not bolting up to the flange in the rear, so you will need a Cobra flange, okay? Now, I got mine for, I got my flange for $32, that cheap, at AutoZone. It's a Dorman, so it's like a, like I guess like a, a different brand. It's not the OEM brand, but I mean, it's on my car and it's doing its job. So yeah, I would recommend just getting that flange. Oil pump gears. Oil pump gears are very important for us guys, especially with these coyotes that like to rev, you know, pretty high. And I mean, like these, these engines, I think stock, you know, it's you're gonna be shifting like at 70, over 7,000, so. Having these oil pump gears is pretty good insurance. You know, you could be at peace with yourself knowing that, you know, I got oil pump gears and it's not gonna mess it up. Cause once you mess up your oil pump gears and you blow the motor, it's just, it's done. You're gonna regret, you're gonna regret that you didn't buy them. So I would suggest buying them. The ones I bought are Boundary uh, oil pump gears with the sprocket. It was like $328. Another thing I would suggest buying is upgrading your input shaft on the transmission now it's up to you like i said you want to use your t45 your t tr3650 or the t56 upgrading the input shaft is always going to be good now it's better obviously on a t56 upgrading it because the whole transmission is stronger and then you got a stronger input shaft so i would suggest you know upgrading your input shaft i upgraded it to a 26 spline and i bought it from lethal performance it came out to 280 dollars Okay, next thing I suggest buying is some better injectors. Now this is if you wanna run E85. So right off the bat, buying the Lethal Performance fuel system, you will be able to use E85 with the fuel system. Now it, it, depends on which, it depends on which fuel pumps you pick with the kit. Since I got the 465 fuel pumps, you can go E85 or 93, whatever you want. So. Let's just say you get the fuel pumps in the rear for the 85. You're gonna need, the next thing is the injectors. Now the injectors I went with are ID 1050X injectors. Now they're pretty pricey. 
So brand new, I think they're like a thousand dollars. I ended up getting them for 500 on Facebook. So I got them for like literally half the price, $500 for injectors. It's a lot of money, but it's a good deal at the same time. So not only can I run E85 with those injectors, but when I boost this thing later, I don't have to worry about the fuel pumps in the rear. And I don't have to worry about the injectors because I got more than enough injectors for like seven, 800 horsepower. Like I got more than enough. And yes, you can use those big injectors NA because the tuner, Lund, they can, they can put how much fuel your car needs. You know, it's not just going to be squirting excessive fuel. So yeah, that's why the tune comes in handy, but you can use a bigger injector. So I would suggest getting a better injector. Okay. Let's see what else. Another thing that I upgraded and I would recommend is getting a better flywheel because if your engine doesn't come with the flywheel, the stock flywheel, you're gonna be stuck with your 4.6 flywheel and it depends if you have a, Ro a Romeo or a Windsor engine, the flywheel probably won't bolt up. So you're gonna need a flywheel and the flywheel that I bought is a spec aluminum flywheel. So that's what I bought. Another thing, is a cold air intake. You can use a stock air box, which is, you know, perfectly fine. The air box comes with the control pack. So if you want to save some money, by all means use a stock air box. You can change out the filter. You should be fine. Use a stock filter, whatever, it'll be good. But if you want to change, you know, intakes, it's going to run you like a hundred to 150 bucks for a used one. So I would say, I would suggest just get another cold air intake. And the one I got is from a GT350 and I bought it used for a hundred bucks from my friend CJ. So yeah, I'll upgrade the intake, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I tried, I'm trying my best to explain to you guys, you know, what you need and what I recommend. Now I know a lot of you guys might not care like about the performance stuff. You, you just want a coyote in your car. It can be way cheaper. So. Let's just kind of do the math real quick in my head, okay? Look, there's no doubt, there is no doubt you're gonna need a control pack, okay? So that right there is 1600 right off the bat, okay? So 1600, right, for the control pack. Now let's just say you find yourself a F-150, F-150 used engine, okay? Whatever gen, it doesn't matter. I've seen some F-150 engines go for pretty damn cheap, like 2000, 2500, so let's just put 20, this is put 2300 so the control pack 1600 plus 2300 right and let's just say you're gonna use your stock transmission your tr 3650 or your t45 with the stock clutch because it's gonna work your your stock clutch and your stock transmission they already you got a 10 spline and a 10 spline clutch so like it's gonna line up so you can use that and you're gonna use your stock gears um, the next major thing would be the uh, the fuel system. Now, I'm gonna put the fuel system here. Like, I'm gonna add it on here because I'm telling you guys, if you tr if you want to piece it together, yes, there's a way, but it's gonna be difficult. Like, you're gonna be ordering parts, and it might not work. It might be the wrong size. Like, I would just 100% suggest that you get the Lethal Performance Swap Kit, and that's what did I say it was? Um, 1000 we'll just put $1,000, all right? Because I got upgraded fuel pumps, so it was a little bit more. So we're just gonna put $1,000, okay? We're already at $4,900, okay? That's trying to keep it like as cheap as possible. And what else? You don't, you don't need these power by the hour brackets for the alternator relocation and the power steering in your AC, you don't need them. So if you don't want to use your AC and you want to leave the engine how it is, then it looks like you're going to be spending, let's see, uh, oh, let's not forget the K member. I forgot about the K member. You will need that. Cause I, like I'm telling you, if you use the stock K member, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Even, What's this guy, um, Foxcast Media, they tried doing a swap with the stock K member and they just, I think they had made it work but they just decided to not do it because it was, it was just too much of a pain and it was just like cutting it too close. So 
You're gonna need a K member and you don't need the whole, you don't need the whole K member kit. Like you don't need the tubular A arms and the coilovers with it. You can literally just use the K member itself with your stock control arms. So I think I'm gonna estimate, I think just the K member itself is like four or $500. Let's just say worst case scenario, $500, okay? So look, we're at $5,400, okay? That is keeping it like so bare minimum, like bare, just to get it running. But I'm telling you like, you don't really want that. I mean, it's, it's gonna be drivable. It's gonna be like, there's a coyote in there. But I don't know, man. Uh, like I would just suggest getting the extra parts, the extra inch, like security, you know, like especially the oil pump gears. Like that's a, that's a part that I, I would, I was think twice about buying. Like I'm so glad I bought them. It's gonna save you, trust me. You know what? And you're also gonna need the headers. The headers, the non-ceramic ones are like 600 bucks. So bare minimum, F-150 motor, 2,300 bucks. Plus the control pack, 1,600. Plus the fuel system from Lethal Performance, it's like $1,000. Plus the K-member, another $500. And then the long tube headers, they're like $600, the cheapest DBK ones. All that comes out to about $5,900, like $6,000. So right off the bat, those, everything I just said, you need. Now, there's guys that have, have made the stock manifolds work, like from the Coyote, but it's gonna be hitting the firewall, and I've, he's, I've heard guys tell me themselves, like, I wish I would've just done the long tube headers. It's too much work to use the stock manifolds. That's why I said you kinda need the long tube headers. It's an upgrade, but it's kind of a necessity. Like you need the long tube header to avoid all these complications with it hitting the inside of the firewall. So yeah, bare minimum $6,000. Maybe 6,000 and change like around there. But don't forget you need a tune and that depending on where you want to go to get your tune, it's going to vary in price. I only know Lun Racing and their price, which was $800. So let's just say you do the bare minimum, but you still want the, the you know, good tune. So it's going to come out to 6,700, put it to 7,000 because of taxes on all this stuff and you know, giving yourself cushion, like 7,000, around 7,000 something dollars to swap. So that's why everyone always says it's like seven to $8,000 to swap. Now you're probably thinking like, how the hell did you end up getting all the way to 18,000? Well, I just told you guys, I bought all that extra stuff, you know, oil pump gears, I bought upgraded fuel pumps in the rear, I got the Gen 2 motor, I got gears in the rear, I bought brake pads all around, I bought a different rack and pinion, I bought those offset rack bushings, like the list just goes on and on. So, yeah, man, I would say seven to $8,000 is gonna be bare minimum. Anything less than that, I'm sorry, it's just like unrealistic. Like, maybe if you like go stupid cheap and like buy used parts and piece everything together, maybe, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be like seven to $8,000 if you want it to do it right. Like I said, F-150 motor, 2300, okay? And then the control pack, 1600. Fuel system, 1000. Tune, 800 from Lund, you can change that. And then um, the K member, you're gonna need a K member so you don't have clearance issues with the, uh, the headers. And that depending if you buy a Gen 1, Gen 2, you're gonna need those shims. Because like I said, this Gen 2 motor, the oil pan is different than the Gen 1 motors. So it's gonna be hitting the oil pan. And if, you, if it's hitting the oil pan, you're gonna need those, those shims for the motor mounts and you're a K member. But if you have a Gen 1, you shouldn't have to worry about it because it's different and it should clear the K member. So that's pretty much it. I tried my best to give you guys a rundown of how this swap works. Like, it's just so much, man. So much work and stuff to talk about, to try and squeeze into one little video. You know what I mean? This is like, five months of physical labor, me and my dad outside, trying to explain everything that I came across and learned. 
some of the things you will not know until you, you literally see it in, in front of you. You know, everyone's got different setups, Gen 1 with, you know, a T56 or a Gen 2 with a T45, like who knows, like your all's situation, there's all kinds of situations, you're just gonna have to tackle the things as they come, but I gave you the best rundown that I can do. You know, I, I put some prices on here and trust me right now, I am gonna put every single link that I have in the description. Now, some of them might be like, well, if you're watching this video, some of the links may not work by then, but I'm gonna put all the links right now and they're all gonna work. So that way you don't, you're not stuck to where like, where do I get that, where do I get this? I'm gonna put all the links to everything I bought in the description, okay? And like, trust me, I'm not an expert with this stuff. Like, I'm just a kid, I'm 22. I mean, I'm not a kid, you know, but I'm pretty young and I was able to do this swap. It's pretty pricey. I know there's a lot of you guys out there that, you know, you wish and you really, really want this swap. And trust me, I was exactly the same way as most of you behind this camera. I was exactly like you right now with my stock 4.6 motor, you know, full bolt-ons on it and just stuck like, man, I wanna keep up with these new 5.0s. I wanna be able to hang out with my 5.0 friends. You know, I want a Coyote, you know, like I wanna keep up with these new guys. And I just kind of, it's, you just gotta put yourself to it. Like, if you want this swap, it's gonna take a lot from you. I'm telling you right now. In my case, you know, I'm 22. You wanna know how I did it? This is not, you know, dad's money or nothing. I worked for like all of these parts. What I did, what made me, gave me the, you know, the opportunity to do this is I left home. I left like, I left away to go work basically. I left like nine hours away from home. I went to go work in the oil fields. Now like there's a lot of money to be made in the oil fields. I was literally working 112 hours a week. That's 16 hours a day of just work. It's just eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work every day. I would work two weeks straight and then have a week off. Two weeks straight, have a week off. And I was making some good money. And to put in perspective for you guys, at the beginning of this year, 2020, January is when I started saving for the swap. I did not have like, a lot of money. I don't even think I had like a thousand dollars for real. And I went to go work and I started saving. And by, you see, I don't even know what month, but just the fact that I got it all done in a year is mind blowing. I don't know how I did it to be honest. I can't believe I'm standing here in front of my Coyote Swap car. Like I literally, I'm telling you, I used to be like most of you. I wished, I wished like two, three years ago, I was looking at Coyote Swaps. I was like, I want to be able to do that. Like. Like, where am I gonna get this money from, you know? Now, for some of us, unfortunately, it's gonna be a little harder than others. Like me, I don't have any kids, I'm still young, you know, I'm still living with my mom and my mom, they're divorced, but yeah, mom and dad, you know, living, living home, I don't have kids, I don't have any bills, I'm gonna start going to school again. You know, I made a sacrifice, it just comes down to what you guys, are you guys willing to sacrifice for the amount of money this thing costs? Like, it all boils down to that. Now, I'm not saying like if you have kids and I have a family, you can't because there's guys out there that are doing this that have families. It's just, you know, everyone's got their own situation. It, it just comes down to like, you gotta save money and you gotta be buying parts slowly. Okay, I know some of us like part-time jobs. Trust me, I was, I've been doing this. I've been with part-time jobs. Like there's some of you guys that are working minimum wage jobs. Like I get that. Like before I went to go work over there, I was working minimum wage and I was buying stuff for my two valves and I knew that if I was gonna stay there, there's no way I would be able to afford this swap. The only way would be like to get a crazy loan from the bank and then make payments on it, but you just, I'd rather not do that. I mean, every, I feel like anyone wouldn't wanna do that, but if it comes to it, I mean, that's your decision. But yeah, it just, it comes down to like, you gotta make a sacrifice to save for this swap. And I'm glad I did it this year. This year being, you know, even though it's been a crazy pandemic and all this negative stuff, like this has been my year where I really took a step forward and you know, for this channel and for me, like this was a goal for me. Like, I'm not kidding, I used to sit in, I used to sit in school researching the Coyote Swap when I should have been studying for my test. 
I'd be making a list of stuff that I needed and I couldn't even afford it, like not even close. And I was researching how to do the swap. And now here I am, like literally everything's in the car. It's just mind blowing. So if I did it, you guys can do it. I'm 22 years old. I'm pretty sure some of you guys are younger, if not older, just go for it. Like it comes down to you. You gotta make the decision, like I said, save. You gotta work. You gotta work to be able to, you know, get the money to pay for this stuff. And don't get discouraged with the prices. Just take it, you know, apart at a time. Now, for me, it took me like literally half a year to save up for the amount of money. And then it took me, it took me and my dad like five months to finish the swap. I think we finished it like what last month or the month before. So, yeah, I was able to get the money quick and finish the car with my dad, thank God for my dad. We did it outside, I don't have to pay for any labor, you know, most of you guys might have to pay somebody to do the swap, which unfortunately is gonna add more to the cost, but it's just how it is, you know. That's, it's, this, this swap is pretty damn special. You cannot just go off the lot and request a coyote swap. You gotta buy these already done or used from someone else and who knows how, how well put together it is and stuff, so. Yeah, this swap is pretty, pretty sweet and unique. It's like a unicorn, <laughs> that's what I call it. But yeah, that's gonna pretty much do it for this video. If you guys watched the whole thing, I really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, ask me in the bottom. I'm gonna try my best to like answer your questions because uh, I'm like I said, I'm not an expert, but I'll do the best that I can to help you guys out because I mean, I went through the swap, so I do have some knowledge, you know, some input for this. So yeah, leave a comment if you guys have any questions. Check out my Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. If you liked the video, just make sure you leave a like and share it, subscribe, really helps me out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate all the support. We're like at 4,600 and something subscribers, which is like, stupid which is ridiculous honestly no bs my goal before 2021 this year was to reach what was it i wanted to reach 1000 subscribers 1000 i'm at 4000 i remember i was like at 900 something and i was like man i want to hit a thousand before you know before christmas before the new year and I'm at 4,600 subscribers. I literally, not, I didn't double it. I, I don't know how it happened. You guys are like, you guys are awesome for watching the videos and sharing. Like I get nothing but good support from you guys. And like, I really appreciate it. And I'm working on something right now. Like, I would just say I'm working on something for, you know, for you guys. Some of you guys know what it is, but I'm gonna keep it a secret right now and uh, keep working at it. But yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll see you guys later.